All right, so here's my trick on doing a plumbing pass-through, essentially a through-hole connector to transfer my water drain through the floor of my Total Composites camper. That's right. In this video today of my Expedition Camper DIY build series, I'm going to show you how I am doing a plumbing pass-through to make sure it's completely sealed and watertight from both above and below and not thermally transferring any kind of heat from either side and that also is replaceable and removable later. So what I'm using here is a essentially a bulkhead fitting, a through hole fitting, and I've got a nipple on the end there. And that's a two inch nipple, this bulkhead fitting, which has a silicone gasket. And this is a one inch threaded MPT connection. And so that on the bottom here, I'll have a one inch on the top of a one inch and I have a through pass through with this nipple with a two interconnecting. And so on the bottom here, what I'm gonna do is glue in, I've already cut out a fiberglass support. So this will spread out the load, spread out the seal. I'm gonna glue this onto the floor at the bottom here of the camper through my hole that I've already drilled like that. And I'm gonna glue that in there. My seal's gonna seal that. Now I can still remove this should I ever need to remove this plumbing fittings, bulkhead fitting and do any kind of fixture there. But now I've got a straight essentially pipe all the way through. And I could do this with a nipple or something else, but this gives me an absolutely solid connection because what's gonna happen is this piece is going to interconnect with the other piece on the other end and they're going to interlock together and they're going to clamp the floor between the two. So much like I've done here, there's a bigger bulkier fitting here, but the same thing. I've got a glued in fiberglass strut. I've got a EPDM seal here between those. I've got this glued in place here, some Sikaflex. And then this is tightened down here so that this is completely uh, basically a solid pipe all the way through when you interconnect the two pieces clamping from the top clamping from the bottom This is totally solid now But the great thing is I can actually remove this if I ever need to and the other benefit is I can now come in here and screw in here a nipple or a or a, uh, an elbow and Come off this to go right into my gray water tanks that are going to be I'm going to have a connection right through this hole here in the frame And so I'll tee into my gray water connection uh, hose, which is right here beneath this And so it'll be a really wonderful attachment point right through there um, Nice thing is too is near the muffler uh, So it'll actually stay warm through the winter time So it probably won't freeze up But even if it did it's below the van here any hot water or the camper any hot water stuff that comes down through it will melt it away but at least this way, it's got a lot of room and a lot of headroom before it can water can back up uh, into the camper should it ever do that. Like if there's a water freeze or something down here below, it's got a lot of headroom to, to climb up to it. And also it's completely watertight and water sealed before it back up into a sink up above, um, which is what it would eventually do. So it's got basically about three feet of movement, a little more than that, about four feet of vertical height before it do that. Um, so it's got a lot of room. And the other benefit too is by having it this way, I can just connect this so should I ever get something plugged up in here uh, or I need to you know clear something out or change a fitting out I can certainly do that here as well and then I can also put a little uh, heat mat mat or a trace heat, heat wire you know on this plumbing should I feel like I really need that uh, for really cold weather to make sure I'm still uh, have active drain out of my tanks here. This drain here is actually for my drain for my tank. So it's only really in a rare circumstance when I want to drain all my freshwater tanks. This one here is going to be for my uh, gray water. So that'll be for my gray water from my sinks, my bathroom sink, my kitchen sink, and my washer and dryer. So that's going to be a lot of warm water coming through. It's going to clear that out. My shower is going to have a separate drain over that way up in the front on the other side. And that's going to be done very similarly, but just with a a very similar set of fittings, just a separate fit uh, uh, connection. And so that one, uh, the nice thing about that is that uh, if one plugs up, the other one um, will still sh should be operational. And I'm also probably going to do an overflow from my kitchen sinks over to my bathroom shower. So that way, if there's ever an overflow or something, it can drain out that other uh, way as well. So just to uh, cover kind of all circumstances so that's how i'm doing this let me start gluing this up and let's get this all right so enough talking let's start doing and this all starts with of course finding out where exactly to put that hole or the holes that you want to put in and there's a lot of measuring from both above and below so that i can have these just outside of the chassis rails so i can access them but inward enough of those chassis rails so i can still fit my storage boxes in between uh, those in the outside of the camper box and of course also in the location so that i'm not going over a subframe mount or something like that and some of these measurements 
are a little bit of a guess until you actually drill a pilot hole, or maybe not a guess, but just a close estimate. And so I start with drilling that pilot hole, and that is also the hole I'm going to use for my hole saw uh, to start through. And so ideally, I want to choose a drill bit that I can go all the way through the floor thickness, which is three and a quarter inches thick. And that way I can go down below and check exactly where that comes out and go and, and make sure it's in the right spot. If not, I can make an adjustment within this hole like I, you see I do here. And that's a little bit of an adjustment from side to side, basically in the diameter of this hole saw. And these roughly one inch or three quarter inch pass through, through hole connectors, their outside diameter that you're actually drilling is usually about one and three quarters of an inch diameter. So depend, that's for about a one inch or a three quarter inch through hole connector. Depends on the through hole connector. I did find there was quite a bit of difference between different through hole connectors. And I will show you some different ones and put a link down into the comments below of the one that I preferred, which actually was the lowest cost one. And But it was very well made, very durable, had a very nice gasket. And it, because of its lower price point, made it really easy to buy two of these. And of course, install one on top and one on the bottom and compress them together. And I did actually make a change on the size of my through hole connector that I placed here. And so I went ahead and used a piece of scrap wood to go ahead and basically become my new through hole uh, drill bit connection. So I can basically mark exactly where that was, put a new larger hole saw into it and drill out the old hole that was in there without having any kind of issue. So that way it became really a guide for my new hole saw size to go through there. So that's just one little tip and trick that you can do. Another tip trick is I still prefer to drill these holes starting from above and all the way through from above down below. And of course the hole saws only go through a depth of about two inches. So I drill through about two inches, remove the foam and the fiberglass structure or surface, and then go ahead and continue drilling through with an extension on there. So I can get all the way through. So this way all the dust and debris and everything else is falling down below. And so I've got to figure it, I got to pull that plug out of there so I can continue to saw down and to drill up on the top, which is what I want to be doing. There we go. Okay, I broke that free. That's awesome. So there's my plug. So I can take this and cleanly dispose of that, clean up this sawdust. Now, go ahead, get this back in here. So make sure I get a nice straight hole going all the way through to the bottom. Of course, I've already measured that all out. All right. Well, turns out that this drill guide here does not allow me enough throw, enough length of cut to cut all the way through this three and a quarter inch deep panel. So unfortunately, I've got to transfer the whole saw straight to the drill. No big deal. Just drill manually. So that's what I'm going to do. I've got to turn the saw this way so I can fit between my existing framing I have here and get it down to the depth. And to assure that it's fully watertight all the way both inside and outside of these through hole connectors, I use a Sikaflex sealant that had the right consistency of between a liquid and a paste to really get flowed into these spaces and yet seal them up without making a mess. Yeah, let's try to get the centered on the hole here. That feels pretty centered. That really compressed up in there. Okay, now we got the compressed up in there. Let's go seal it from above. And I pushed as much of this seal and adhesive into the hole as I could on the outside of the nipple to make sure I'm not in the inside of the nipple and not so much that it wouldn't push out. All right. all right, here's my other clampy piece. MPT threads on all the way through and a silicone gasket and then a nice big nut to clamp that down. So now, with my Sikaflex all around this and my nipple that's already got pipe thread sealing on it. Now all I have to do is screw this on like I am and just keep screwing on. I know it's already completely compressed up from below and so I just keep screwing this on until I know I've got a really good tight clamp. So now I get my really big pipe out, uh, pipe clamps I know I got this pretty well centered now. Now I've got that goop all around that sickle flex. This is going to be really tight sealed connection, but I can still separate the two. And so I go ahead and get my so much stuff in here. Big, big clamp, which was challenging to fit in this small space. Get that really nice and clamped down so it's really tight, completely sealed up. And these big channel locks was the best tool I had since I didn't have any other kind of wrench or socket to fit this hex here. 
I can see that nipple is not moving on the inside there at all. It is staying completely stationary, and I can see the seal of gas compressing out. So I know I've got a really good tight seal, sealed all the way through with that sickle flex all around. Now I can put my elbow in here, and I've got a totally nice, beautiful sight tight seal connection, so that's fantastic. You can see my other one over here, next on my mess. This one's already in place. This is my drain for my fresh water tanks. So that one's already in place, essentially the same setup. And so that gets me about as low as I can get with a totally sealed connection that is replaceable, removable, so I can get to if I ever need to. So that's my connection on my drain line come in here. I can access it should I need to. You can see all the way down in there, all the way to my pipe clamp, which I'll keep that on until I get that nice in, until it's nice and dry and I know everything's on there. But now it's gonna be totally so clamped really on. really nice gooped up <laughs> seal here. And if I loosen this up now, this is going to be completely solid on there. You see no movement at all. So that is that is golden. And now what I can do is I can go ahead and smooth this out a little bit. You'll see on my next ones, I get a lot cleaner and make it easier. The bummer about the Sycaflex is it really does create these strings, these taffy-like strings. Oh, it's kind of messy for sure. Uh, clean some of that up. One thing I'm doing as well with this is I'm also sealing up the edges of this structural fiberglass bar, which even though it's rated for the outdoors, it won't or shouldn't really absorb any moisture, at least of any any material amount at all, nothing even noticeable. Still, it just seals up those edges, rounds them off, smooths them off, so it gives a nice smooth profile as well. So any tubing, that rubs against there should have a nice smooth edge as well. And I'll come back in and cut these strings off later on from this taffy like stuff going on here. And that's on. Nice and solid. Beautiful. And this is what it looks like when all finished and the little bit of fiberglass bar that I used as a platform wasn't actually necessary. It did change out actually the size of one of these to a larger one as I showed in a little bit of my earlier video. So I could fit these air conditioning compressor hoses through there. These are the cruise and comfort hoses, the largest ones, and they fit through these two inch pass through holes and including of course the double, ho the double hoses through those. These will also accommodate some four on wires, two four on wires to them as well. So I'm really happy with these. All right, so the hole that I drilled initially, which is a good thing I did a small pilot hole because it actually came out right over the uh, subframe mount to the camper. So I can actually put a bulkhead fitting through there, at least as big as the one I'm gonna put through. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and drill it out for a smaller bulkhead fitting from the top and then a nipple with a gasket on the bottom. It'll effectively be the same thing or nipple through from the bulkhead fitting above to a gasket with a nut on the bottom. So that will encapsulate it and do the same thing as the bulkhead fitting and then I'll be able to use that that hole for another set of wires coming through. Meanwhile, what I've done is I went ahead and moved over exactly six inches because my subframe mount comes to right here. That'll put this just on the other side of it. This ring will fit between the subframe mount and the camper because there's a little bit of a gap there. I've got a little bit of gap here between the camper frame and cabinet frame and of course the next one which I'm going to put. So one for the air conditioning lines and the other for the alternator electrical lines. Either one can be used for either and that way they're close to where my pass-through is here to get to the electrical and also crossover for the air conditioner. I just went ahead and temporarily put a zip tie on this plumbing here just to pull it out of the way. That works fine. This allows my pass-through bulkhead to get right here uh, for the wires and the air AC compressors. So I'm ready to go. I've got it measured out. I'm going to go ahead and drill another pilot hole and check it out once again before I do it. And a key tip here is to make sure to drill that pilot hole through the middle of the big hole that you plan to drill. You can always adjust the size or placement of the big hole and still encapsulate that small pilot hole inside of it should you need to. Perfect. Perfect. Look at the center line. I'm good. Center line, great. That's going to work perfect. I'm going to drill this one, get this one installed, and then come back and do the other one. Well, it was uh, not so easy. Um, this bulkhead fitting says it uses a three inch hole saw to cut the outer diameter of this, 
which I use a three inch hole saw. I measured the three inch hole saw. It was uh, six one thousandths of an inch less than three inches in its outer dimension. However, this is as much as about a two one hundredths of an inch greater than three inches, which sounds like not much at all. I was hoping this would thread in through the hole, but it didn't. This fiberglass and plywood on the floor is really strong. And so what I had to do is take a file, a very coarse file, and just keep filing all the way around to round out the hole ever so slightly so that this can go in. And it's a really tight fit, which is great. It'll definitely seal up wonderfully, but it's such a tight fit I have to thread it in um, ever so slightly, but at least it's there. So now i got to go check the bottom, make sure that I filed that one away enough too that it can fit in. And this way I can get both these in and get this installed. And then unfortunately i got to repeat it for the other one. So here we go. Let's go do this. Yeah, cool. It's going to go in just barely. All right, we got her in just barely. All right, so now let me clean all this up. Clamped up in place there. And you may have saw on this one, I'm actually using an aluminum nipple instead of a PVC nipple like on the other ones. And the reason why is because it's not plumbing. It's actually going to be AC compressor hoses and or four out wires that are a little bit thicker. And aluminum nipple is thinner in its thickness. Aha! And the reason why I use an adhesive sealant around the nipple and the bulkhead fittings in between the floors is to make sure it's watertight and thermally sealed. There we go. Look at that beauty. Nice and on there now. See that? Fully sealed, gasket compressed, nice, tight, solid connection that will be water and air tight, except for the opening, which of course that will be sealed up. So that is complete and done. Now I can line out where the other one will go and get working on that. In order to seal these holes, once I do pull the wires and the compressor hoses through, I will seal them up with an appropriate sealant that can be removed so I can add or remove wires, but make sure those holes are sealed up and watertight as well. All right, let's go down below and check it out. Make sure it's in a perfect spot. Take this to line it up. All right, there's that one. All installed beautifully, nice and tight. Look at that up in there. You can see it's nice and clean, beautiful pass through, right? Nice and, anyways, it's in there. Now this one. And a few tips and tricks for doing this is one is of course having the right size hole saw. As I mentioned, even the size they tell you is not always exactly the same because there's a generally a metric to English conversion that doesn't really make it the same. So sometimes you have to do a little bit of filing or even drill a slightly larger hole. That's unfortunate. Or buy a metric drill hole saw to match up with these if you are using the standard size hole saws. Uh, the other one is, of course, the sealing around these and also the nipples. Make sure you use nipples that are the right length to interconnect these two bulkhead fittings. And that's a little bit of a, just a measurement of these different bulkhead fittings once you receive them to order the right nipples and make sure they all interconnect together with those and that they're sealed nice and tight with that adhesive seal in between so they're watertight. And then, of course, a final sealant that's removable, replaceable inside these holes once the wires and the compressor hoses are pulled through. So I'll show you some final Pictures of those, here's some right here, the fittings and so forth that are already in there for the plumbing. And now we've got a bit more to do following up, coming up with, of course, our cabinet framing, so a little bit more on that, finishing up the water system itself, and also our getting our slide out dining table installed. So some exciting stuff coming up. Thank you so much for watching, subscribing, and certainly enjoying my DIY Expedition Camper Build video series.